There is everything we need for the replacement, to which I will come back later to explain what is what tool. By the way, I have the one for the 82mm bearing, which is in some of the Mazdas, Fords and Volvos to mention a couple. There are also a different sizes, I believe the WAG group uses this kind of bearing the most, but I may be wrong on that one. So back to the assembling. Take the two halves which have the bigger bore that goes over the bearing. Put them together with two bolts, you will need a 6mm allen bit to tighten them. Now grab the spindle, spray or use some lubricant on it. I used WD-40 again. Firstly, place a thrust ball bearing on it then the metal plate and the big circular plate with holes in it. Into the four holes, put the four pins and put it through the wheel bearing. Now from the other end you will need the smaller goldish colored plate which fits through the wheel hub hole and finally the long nut. If you are concerned about the ABS sensor, also called wheel speed sensor, that it will be damaged, then you can remove it, however you don't have to be it won't be touched during the removal. So let's remove that bad boy. Place a 30mm spanner on the end of the tool and let it touch the knuckle. That way it can be a one person job. Anyways, I doubt that it would be a piece of cake holding against it. Now start ratcheting the front end. For that you will need a 22mm hex socket. I recommend using some extension such a jack handle or a very long breaker bar. After you heard a popping noise it should be easier to wretch it. It takes a decent time to remove it so please be easy on yourself. Once you are done clean the wheel hub hole with a wire brush but be mindful of the ABS sensor if you haven't removed it. In my case it wasn't that bad so I didn't need so much of an effort. Lucky me again. At this point the half of the job is already behind our back. So let's put the fresh and new bearing back where it belongs. In order to do that we will need the plates with a smaller bore from the tool case. You may be thinking why I'm not giving you another options here. So here is why. For the reason that the bearing is together with the hub, it wouldn't be a good idea to push on the hub surface because it could damage the ball bearing part. From my understanding, if you would be pushing on the hub surface, it would move the inner race of the bearing a little bit out of its position, because the whole bearing assembly makes contact between the outer race of the bearing and the wheel hub hole if it makes any sense. So that's why you can't use a regular bearing slash bushing removal tool or a press here, unless you have the correct adapter plate to push on. However, if you know about any other method, Feel free to share them in the comments section. Well, now back to assembling the tool. It is 90% the same as for the removal. Unfortunately, you can't use the thrust bearing here because the spindle is not long enough, but anyways, it goes back easier than it comes out. So place the large circular plate over the spindle, put the four pins in it, but use the larger goldish colored plate on the end of the spindle instead of the small one. And finally the nut. Before you start tightening the things down, make sure you align the bearing perfectly straight and level into its position or slightly tilted upwards because when you will be ratcheting and applying force on it, it will come out of the alignment towards the bottom end of the bearing if it makes any sense. Don't worry if you have to try it a couple times. Practice makes the master. So once the bearing is aligned, start ratcheting on the front end of the tool. Again, it will take a good effort and time to get it in the place. You can tighten it all the way to the end, because it shouldn't go further than its place. Well, so we are done with replacing the wheel bearing, now we just need to put everything back together 